one second. Okay, ladies, this one is a sister to sister moment. However, to the brothers watching and listening, I would love to hear your comments and opinions below, especially if they're going to be reassuring to the many African women that I am directing this video towards. Um, before I jump into anything per usual, black love, black pride, black power, you have to know yourself, to love yourself, to love your people, and um, don't get mad, get right. <laughs> With that being said, we're going to be talking about black and natural. And this is more of a heart to heart, you know, girl talk, sister moment than it is like a lecture or a lesson or anything of that nature. I'm basically just going to be telling you guys how um, some things that I particularly noticed in my own experience from being black and unnatural and going to black and natural. Uh, first of all, I would love to let you guys know that my experience, I'm sorry, I have mosquito bites and they're itchy. My experience with black men, just all kinds of different kinds of black men, has um, drastically improved from me being a natural black woman to, or from, versus when I was a non-natural black woman. Now, mind you, I'm not just talking about in the hood. I'm not just talking about in the state of California. I am not just talking about in the country of the United States. Everywhere I go, I have had a tremendous improvement of how black men respond to me as a natural woman versus an unnatural woman. Whether I was in Georgia, Mississippi, Texas, Arizona, California, um, where else? Washington, uh, Guatemala, Honduras, Belize, no matter where I go, I have been getting the same positive response to me as a natural woman. Now, I have this tendency to stand out wherever I go, partly because I'm tall and dark. Um, it's got a lot to do with it. Um, however, there are a lot of tall, dark girls out there, but when I'm in a room full of tall, dark black women, I still have a tendency to stand out. And I'm not even gonna go on that whole, that inner beauty light that just shine with that, this thing, <laughs> you know, that might have a little to do with it, but chances are, when it comes to how I dress myself, how I carry myself, and how I present myself, like with my hair and lack of makeup and whatnot, it's very easy to distinguish me between in a room full of tall black women, especially, um, I don't even want to say especially in the States, like the, pro the, the best way for me to probably get lost in the crowd full of tall, dark skinned black women is for me to go to the continent where there's a lot of tall, dark skinned black women who are natural because that's what normally, that's normally the obvious difference between me and the women around me that I'm all natural. I've noticed, you know, I used to be a huge Bath and Body Works and Victoria's Secret fan. I have all the lotions, all the sprays. I had so much that I still have a ton of lotions and a ton of sprays. I just don't use them, you know? And the interesting thing is I've gotten more compliments on the way I've, I smell since I've just been using black soap and either sunshine or maybe some olive oil or coconut oil, I've gotten way more compliments on my smell from using natural plant-based and earth-based products than I've ever gotten from using Bath and Body Works, Victoria's Secret, et cetera, et cetera. And it gets to the point where even in my hair, I get compliments on the smell of my hair by black men and women alike as well. And it's really black soap and olive oil. <laughs> I'm dead ass, black soap and olive oil. And I'm like, you, you smell dinner or something? Like, my hair is more like salad? Like, what? You know, but people love it. People love the way I naturally smell. And I would have never thought it. And I, and I would have never noticed it until going natural because that's when people tell me. People, you know, people never really felt the need to tell me when, I mean, occasionally I'm like, oh, girl, you know, you smell nice. What is that? We'll do blah, blah, blah. You know, when you're when I'm walking down the halls and I'm wearing, or when I'm walking around and I'm wearing, you know, whatever spray or whatever lotion, you know, you get compliments here and there. But I notice, like, especially when it comes to hugs and stuff, I used to, I've always been a hugger. I've always given my people hugs, unless you are creepy and present yourself energetically as a creeper, then I'm gonna 
hit you with that church side backpack, you know, if that, or fist bump. But the point is, I've always hugged people, and people have always been close enough to smell me. And I've always gotten, just in these past couple of years of being natural, I've gotten way more compliments on the way I smell with only using, like, black soap, you know? And I just find that so interesting. And I would love to, you know, get a panel of a couple of brothers, you know, different kinds of brothers, you know, not all the same, like on the uh, same uh, pro-black or conscious or spiritual wavelength, just different, a couple of different kinds of brothers, sit down with them, chop it up on, you know, what attracts them to natural black women. Because when I say it's not just one kind of men, my ladies, it is different kinds of African men. I'd be out there on the boulevard selling my mixtape, you know, almost, probably almost looking stereotyp stereotypically lesbian or whatever, but my hair, you know, I come out there with my backpack full of fruit and my hair is in an afro or it's in braids and plaits or it's in twists or, you know, whatever natural style I've come up with and half the time it really, to me, it don't be no big thing. It's literally just a little protective style. You know, I just got out of a wash day and I'm working on stretching it or whatever. You know, it's not blow dried, no heat, no um, creams, no product junkie, no um, cellophane, no dye, no perm, no texturizer, no wig, no nothing. Just how I took off my headscarf this morning. My edges do not be slayed and filleted, except for my baby hair. I just be waking up with my baby hair. It's just be. <laughs> Slay it all you hoes. That's not on purpose though. That's not on purpose. But the point of the matter is, I'm out there in one of the grimiest, like sickest parts of California, and yet the brothers there are responding very positively to my aesthetic. They're responding very positively to my smell, to my hair, to my look, to my all of that. And I'm looking around all these gorgeous sisters gorgeous beautiful different shades of sisters walking up and down the street from all over the world because everybody comes from all over the world to visit hollywood and you're looking at me you know that sister's and that sister's uh malaysian lace front is filleting and slaying and sashaying right now like um, i personally feel like as african women we should not be covering up our hair with anything less than our hair but there are some sisters out here really working their weaves and their this and that and their makeup be on fleek and their eyebrows be all penciled right and all that other kind of stuff. And yet I noticed that a lot of black men are still responding and looking at coming to talk to me. And I'm like, you know, you, you don't see her, her, or her, because half the time I don't want to be talked to. <laughs> half the time I'm not in the mood to be talked to. So I try and redirect their attention towards other beautiful black women and they all seem to be attracted to me even the ones that I'm not attracted to. And I find it interesting because I'm like, how am I even attracting these kind of men when that's not the frequency or energy or any of that that I'm putting out? But even though, you know, when, when there's something, when you've got that natural something going on, when you've got that something about you, men of all different calibers are gonna look your direction. And it's gonna have some feeling a lot more bolder than others. Even when it comes to like, the energy I exude, you know, since I'm vegan now as well, my body's a lot cleaner on the inside and um, spiritually I'm a lot cleaner and a lot more happier and whatnot. And everything just works together with the natural stuff in going in, the natural stuff I put on outside, the natural stuff I think in here, the natural stuff I wear in here and how I wear it and whatnot. It all just comes together with the energy that is craved by our brothers. When we put on all these sprays and these lotions and these soaps and, and this makeup and this stuff in our hair, we're, we're honestly only putting most of that stuff in to distract, mask, and disguise the way we're treating ourselves spiritually, the way we're treating ourselves internally, what we're ingesting on many different levels and whatnot. All that stuff is covering it up. But when you're a 100% all natural black woman, there is an energy that can only, there is a frequency, there is a vibe, there is a, a everything that only can come from a black woman that I think every black man craves. The problem is every black man craves it, but they just don't know that they do. And we are in a society that has told us that everything natural about us 
is not good. And if you want to attract a man, especially, or just in general, if you want to be desirable or feel good about yourself, you're going to have to cover up what is you with stuff that is not you. And we can't buy that lie no more. And from experience, I'm telling you from experience, that stuff is a farce. You don't have to cover up your natural essence. And I'm not saying that everyone does it out of insecurity or whatever. Um, you know, sometimes I might feel like putting on some eyeshadow. It's extremely rare though. But the point of the matter is that there is something that you can only get. There is that something that you can only get from a 100% natural black woman. And our brothers crave this. No matter what kind of brother they are, whether they're the educated lame, whether they're the thug, the, the hood rat, the whether they're the um, what's the what's the word, whether they're the fuck boy, whether they're no matter what it is, whether they're the pro black, whether they're the revolutionary, whether they're the black, no matter what it is, no matter what kind of African man you are, there is something, uh, or, or they are, there is something deep within them that craves that something that they can only get from a 100% African woman. It just is what it is. Even the black men that hate black women, there is, and, and part of that hate manifests with the fact that they cannot find that or have not ever been able to receive that and they don't know what that looks like. So they just reject any, everything else that's covered it up. They're rejecting that and thus rejecting us when, and you know, we all, everybody has their parts of playing these things. So my ladies, my sisters, I dare you try it. And I'm not saying that, you know, well, I am saying that because a lot of these sprays, lotions, soaps, um, and things like that, all these stuff we're, we're covering up with, uh, they're bad for you and they don't have anything good in there for you. So come on the team, olive oil, coconut oil, shea butter, and black soap. Get your black on and operate it on with your black shit, you know, and come back to being 100% natural. And it's not going to work, honestly, if your diet is trash because you are and you smell like what you eat, you know. Not obviously, not always on the most obnoxious, obvious level. But um, our noses smell a lot more than we consciously register. Um, so keep that in mind. So if you're going to, uh, if you're going to come to Team Natural, come all the way to Team Natural. Come on, come on, come on. I wash my clothes with black soap, okay? I wash my hair with black soap, and I wash my skin with black soap. And being vegan helps to, especially when you're alkaline vegan, it minimizes muc mucus and toxins in your body. And if you get to a point, and if you want a veggie like that, uh -huh, or your home garden is just popping like that, Miss Lynette Larkins, then your inside is gonna be all clean and natural too. And everything from the inside out will just be this beautiful, raw energy of just, I don't even wanna call it, I don't wanna call it fantasticness or fantabulousness or beauty. It's just, it's just that something that, it is that epitome of natural black girl magic. That's what it is. That, that's something about us that is specifically and only for us, through us, by us, that, that thing that is, that you can only get from the pure essence of a black woman. You can't find that nowhere else. You can find a girl who can do cute makeup in any race. You can find a girl who can slay a weave or, you know, their natural hair that looks like that in any race. You can find a girl who smells like, um, I don't know, night and blooming jasmine <laughs> and pear glace and uh, vanilla brown sugar. You can find the girl who smells like the Bath and Body Works or Victoria's Secret collection anywhere else. But what you cannot find anywhere else is that 100% blackness, that 100% black woman. You can't. You can't. I'm sorry. I don't care what other race uses black soap, goes vegan, and um, puts you know, nothing unnatural in their hair, in their mouth, in their bodies. It's never going to be the same unless it's coming from you, boo. 
to to all my sisters that was just a little insider like hearts heart will do blah de blue and also even fuck boys approach you differently when you when you got that something else going on about you they still fuck boys they still ain't shit you know still be cautious be wary use discernment be choosy but just just that whole approach is it's gonna be different so ladies ladies my african beautiful melanated different types of beautiful sisters out there you'll be surprised the results you get when you on this side of the team so with that being said, per usual, black love, black pride, black power. You have to know yourself, to love yourself, to love your people. And um, I'll catch y'all next video. Peace.